I haven't tried this one before. Hello. <laughs> Ty smiles. Why on earth would I ever make a cup of coffee at 3.30 in the morning? It's beyond me, but I did. So sorry about the wind. As you all know, I'm behind on my days and my vlogs as far as what the date is. So I'll just go ahead and tell you again like I did last time. It is Monday morning. And welcome to my home and my pretty, pretty much my front yard. The tide is way out. Look at all these rocks. I've never been here with the t when the tide was this far out. You see all the holes where the, I'm guessing it's the little sand crabs. Ah, so much wind, sorry. Back when I did the video on beating depression in Thailand, this one here, wherever it's at, I, I eluded that I would tell everybody how I got to Thailand, what made me pick Thailand. In, 2000 and, in 2008, a good friend of mine, Mike, was coming back from Afghanistan. He ended up in Phuket. I went over to see him after he got back we were grilling steaks one night, and uh, he said, Rob, he said, real, if you ever get the chance, you need to visit this place called Phuket in Thailand. And at the time, I was still in the mindset that I would never travel the world. It was just, I've never, I, back in the day, I never had a desire to travel the world. I am not a traveler by nature. I am the kind of guy that will go into an online dating service and put that I'm only looking for someone in a 10 mile radius. I mean, I really don't like to travel. Ironically, the last girlfriend I had was 700 miles away from my home. That's a whole nother story. And then, ironically, I end up 9,000 miles away from home now, wherever I'm at, on the other side of Earth. So even though I say I don't travel, I guess I kind of do, even though I don't plan on it. That was the seed, that was the first seed ever planted in my head about Thailand. I'm one of the few American males that never naturally had the hots for Asian women. I just, I never really had the hots for Asian women, and ironically, one of my best friends is Korean. Maybe I don't know myself that well. I, anyway, so I never thought I would come to Thailand. As time went by, I would actually, roosters, I would see things on TV or YouTube or, or whatever about uh, Asia or Thailand. And I somehow learned, and I don't remember where, I watched a documentary or something that American men were liked in Thailand. So that's like two things in my head now from 2008. Third thing I found out was uh, the cost of living over here is really good. Heard it was uh, cheap to live here. It was either 2008 or 2009, I think was the first time me and my ex-girlfriend split up and I moved out. And I didn't plan on going to Thailand, but I think that's when I finally started thinking about my age and that 
if things really hadn't worked out at my age at this point in time, <laughs> right? You know, sometimes you just sit there and think, okay, um, you can try to be good at something your whole life and sometimes you're just not good at it. I'm not good with uh, relationships. In America, I could get on, I am not very good at relationships, at least not in America. No, just not. I just, I'm not good at that. I'm good at a lot of things on this planet, but that's not one. I can walk up to any woman on this planet. I am the best wingman in the entire world. I can't, I, I can't close, I don't usually end up taking, getting, I don't usually end up with any phone numbers, of course, I never really ask either, but anyway, that's my own problem. I remember sitting at the computer one day and looking up how much the Thai bot was compared to the US dollar. I don't even remember why I did it. I just remember doing that. I guess I had started in my mind thinking if everything fails, that I could go to Thailand and at least live uh, a little while, you know, and just check it out. Like I said, I hadn't heard anything bad about Thailand. 2011, I think it was 2011, every time. 2011 is when uh, me and the ex split up, uh, moved out. I remember going after work one night and seeing Shannon, the, the one I said was my good friend that's Korean. And I remember telling her, I was like, I was, I was like, um, <laughs> I said, you know what? I said, if everything fails here, I'm gonna go to Thailand. I'm just gonna pack it up and go to Thailand. And I said it jokingly, like, I didn't think anything more, I didn't think bad things were gonna happen. I didn't think I was gonna get fired. I didn't think a whole lot of stuff was gonna happen. The work environment that I was in at the time, I wouldn't say was high pressure, but it was heavy pressure. It was a heavy pressure job. It was a great job. But um, I remember going in back into C. Shannon one night and I was talking to her and I'm like, I'm like, if this, I said, if, if I lose this job for any reason, I said, I'm, I'm going to Thailand. And I kid you not, the man and woman sitting next to me at the bar having dinner, they said, oh, our son is in Thailand and our grandson is in Thailand. And they said, our son's name is Rob. All right, freaky. So I'm sitting at the bar talking to these two people and I said, that's really cool. I said, is there any chance that I could get his email address and maybe just correspond with him. And they said, absolutely. They gave me his email address and I wrote him a simple email saying, hey, how do you like it? If I ever came over, would you be willing to, um, you know, show me around for a couple of days or two? And he said, absolutely. And then I think, I don't remember, I think it was probably two months after that is when I got fired, is when everything bad happened. I mean, it was just like, got to, uh, evicted, more or less, evicted, fired, uh, stuff, you've seen it all. The, the parents of Rob, they would come to the restaurant like once a week. So I told him, I said, I, I think I'm going to Thailand. I really think I'm going to Thailand. And all my friends busted my chops. They were just kind of like, oh, come on, man, what are you going to do? When are you going to get another job? Because you know you're not going to Thailand. Well, you know, it, yeah. Then one night I just bought the ticket. I bought the one-way ticket. I keep explaining, I, okay, let me explain this again. To get a one-way ticket to Bangkok, you have to write the government a letter and explain why there's only a one-way ticket. Otherwise, you have to get a one-way ticket, or excuse me, otherwise you have to get a round-trip ticket. Yeah, I bought the one-way ticket. I came over here, Rob picked me up from the airport. He let me crash at his apartment for two nights. He showed me a place I could stay for a week or to uh, pay by the week. Yeah, and the rest is history. The rest is, the rest is all the way up to today. Hey, how you doing? I'm st for some reason, I'm still here. All right, so let's recap. My friend told me, he said, you've got to check this place out. That was one, and I trust my friend dearly. Then, life handed me a box of chocolates. I, I'm the Forrest Gump. I don't know what I'm doing. Will I come back to America? Uh, of course I'll come back to America. Would I live here forever? Yeah, yeah. I mean, why, why wouldn't I?